Well, I marked, um, put a straight edge down the side of the neck and uh, projected it back to the arse end of the body here, both sides. And when I actually did the checking out the width, the, 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 the joint here is three millimeters off off center for the center of the neck kind of thing so I'm not really worried about that um, you know it could be that I just actually measured the center of this incorrectly or the thing just you know worked out a bit like a bit wonky which is hardly surprising when you consider you only need a quarter of a degree probably in the neck angle but I think the important thing with this instrument is that this space in here is perfect otherwise it would look really bad if the neck closer to one of the lyre arms. Um, I've done a little clearance route in the back here um, so this crap on the back of the tailpiece doesn't hold it off the edge of the body so that will go on now. Um, one of my like master plans to make this plate like um, better than the original um, where I wanted the two upper screws not to go into the tail end of the the um, the top of the body obviously um, yeah my uh, my intentions didn't materialize kind of thing so um, down here at the bottom of the tailpiece I'm gonna have a, a strap pin and screw so that's gonna be pretty damn solid but I'd like to get two screws at the top um, just tiny ones really to to um, locate it sort of thing so um, yeah I'll try and work out something with that uh, I've got um, a pack of uh, brass screws here which are always a bugger to open But um, the important thing with these is that they are like uh, they're like slot head screws. I certainly don't want to use um, you know modern cross head screws on this. It would just look really out of place. So at least I've got some of the right screws to put in, kind of thing. So I'll, I'll pick a couple of these and drill some holes in the top of this and then um, in the top back of this so we can line, at least get it lined up in there but the, the string tree, the, string tree the, the, the strap pin screw will do all the, all the uh, physical stuff of holding the pull of the strings. Well I've been getting on um, tidying up the neck joint. I've uh, sanded in the sides sort of thing in there so it all blends into the body very nicely what I decided to do as well was um, I thinned down the neck heel it was still very bulky when I looked at it here um, so I just carved it down a little bit a little bit thinner and I've also um, just made this uh, pearl uh, cap in bit that goes on the end there. I mean um, you could see a little bit of the joint in there which is like typical we can't really help it at the end of the dovetail so to speak. Um, but um, you know this is a you know seen it on 101 guitars that kind of thing and it really it, you know you clip that off and it gives access to anybody who wants to remove the neck any future luthier it's somewhere they can stick their little steam probe sort of thing into the joint so that's a typical thing I was going to do it like the like the um, headstock uh, truss rod cover with some uh, walnut on top of it kind of thing but when I actually just put that on there I just think it looks really nice as it is so I'm happy with that um, we're really getting down now to like the nitty gritty of the thing and it's really just, just the finishing. 
Um, so, you know, it was a good move yesterday, I think, putting the neck on them a little more encouraged by it. But it's basically going around sanding and sanding, as I keep saying. Um, and I guarantee it that when I put the first coat of sealer on, um, I use cellulose sanding sealer, it's just going to look bloody awful and, uh, and it's going to have to be started again. You don't really see all the imperfections until you've got some kind of finish on it. Um, what, I, what I do basically is go round and feel um, for any like wobbly bits. Um, you know, look across the light and you might see some wobbly bits. So I always tend to sand using a little block of wood just so it's nice and flat and will take down the high spots rather than the high and low spots sort of thing. It's the only way you can do it really is with a block. Um, but we're getting to that stage now I think where, where um, you know, in the next few days I'd hope to start applying a finish on it. So that's really good. I'm going to leave it there today and um, uh, there we go. Yep, be back soon. Cheers. Well, morning again, three our guitars here. Um, I think we've got to the stage where I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely like uh, at wit's end sanding this thing. Basically, I mean, it's you know you expect this kind of thing with a with a with, with any instrument. Um, and I know damn well as soon as I start, it doesn't matter how much sanding I do, as soon as I start finishing putting a finish on, I'm. I'm going to be so disappointed in the first coat and stuff like that. It just is the nature of applying a finish. You just think, oh God, it's never ending. So um, at some point you've got to make a decision to, to, to go ahead and um, start finishing the instrument. Now um, with this, I had initially thought that I'd do like a French polish style finish. Um, that's what the original would have been done in. Um, kind of a rub on finish like a shellac um, uh, sort of thing um, I've had very limited experience doing finishes like that and I don't really see you know it'd be very difficult to to like apply a rubbed finish in these areas here things like that um, so I don't think it's it's the ideal project for me to have my first serious go at um, at uh, a, a rubbed kind of finish, um, so I'm going to go with what I'm I'm very used to, and and that's uh, cellulose finishes, which which are you know um, used extensively on um, on vintage vintage instruments. I'd never do a polyester finish or anything like that. The horrible stuff. Um, so I'm going to go with a spray sprayed cellulose finish. Um, it will make it much easier to get paint and lacquer in these areas. Um, my method on this is there's two ways you can go. Um, if you want a stain on it, um, you can stain it before you you spray any lacquer on it so it absorbs into the wood. Or you can mix the stain in with the lacquer as you go. Um, I'm going to mix the stain in with the lacquer on this. I prefer it because you get a more even look to it. I mean, if you rub stain onto wood, I mean, you see around here, there's a lot of like what you know what's what what's going to be end grain basically. And if I stain that, I know that will go a hell of a lot darker than than the normal grain on the on, on the top here so all these edges are going to get really blotchy and dark if you apply the st stain straight on the wood and you'll end up with a load more sanding to do to kind of even it all out um, which I don't want to do so I'm going to apply um, just clear sand cellulose sanding sealer over it the first one is going to be a very thin coat with it with it thinned down with a lot of cellulose thinner so it absorbs in the wood um, that won't change the color much um, it, will, it will go a bit more mellow looking but uh, that will be that and then like i say the thing is going to the finish is going to be probably be uh, really disappointing um, that's that's the way it goes 
and then we'll have another buttload of sanding to do and um, then I can apply more coats of plain sanding sealer until I'm reasonably happy with it and then go over with clear lacquer and it's at that point that I'll decide whether to stain the clear lacquer or not. I mean I, I will I, sand in sealer and lacquer, cellulose lacquer does change the shade of the wood anyway. Um, it's not a totally transparent finish. It does 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 yellow things a little bit which is which will be nice on this. But not applying the I mean if you apply the stain first and then the lacquer um, the colour you end up with is not going to be what your initial coat of stain was. Um, so that's what I don't want to happen sort of thing. So what I'm going to do now is get this ready for spray in its first coat on and then you'll watch me get really disappointed and mad because it won't have come out like uh, I would. I mean I keep sanding it and everywhere I just see little bits that that I think oh, needs a bit more sanding or this that and the other. So. Anyway, we'll get this masked up. I'm going to need to mask the fretboard and um, this little thing here. I'm not sure what I'll do with that at this stage. I'll try and stand it up off the thing. If I spray it separately, as soon as I put the spray gun on it, it'll just disappear, blown off the bench or something. So, anyway, um, let's get this ready for its first disaster coat of sand and sealer. Well, we're back after the first application of. Um, sand in sealer um, you can see how much nicer a color it it gets just with that so you know if you'd have stained the wood first then you know you'd be going even darker kind of thing you've got to keep that in mind if you stain first and that's why I like to um, stain the wood like um, with 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 the dye mixed in with a lacquer because you can just shade it and if it's too you know, if it's too dark when you spray it on, you can just dilute it with more clear lacquer and make it lighter, and you can muck about a bit more rather than staining it first. But I, I, I just think this this piranha pine that uh, came from one of my dad's shelves in his dining room is just such a pretty wood. I really like it. Um, it's got a gorgeous colour and a really nice grain, and and the way we made it. Um, you know we've got the same grain on both sides sort of thing so you can see these like two dark stripes here those sort of thin dark stripe there and then all this grain flares off on the end and it match and it's really nice that we've got the flame maple on the side which is remained quite bright this this wood is very dense and uh, tends tends not to take um, you know you don't really need sand in sealer on, on, on maple at all. You can go straight to straight to clear lacquer sort of thing. But so definitely be spraying the sides. The back, um, I'm rather keen on that as well. Um, my initial thoughts are that you know I've got to do something with these. I don't know. I'll, I'll get further down the line when I decide what to do. I've got this irritating filler here. And I still don't really know what to do about that. I'm going to mess about with my airbrush a bit and see if I can fade it in. And of course, then um, you know, like I, like I've said about a billion times, do the old violin style thing there or whatever, or even maybe there's something else I can do. Um, and then we've got this gorgeous walnut on here. Um, I must say my spray gun wasn't working very well as I've given it a damn good cleaning out now. Um, so there's only a very light coat on but I'm going to get on and sand that back. But you know I'm I'm kind of really happy with that. Um, you know the colour. I just think it's just so damn cool. I had a guy come over to pick up a guitar yesterday that I'd um, relic for him. Um, a Gibson 345 brave man it looked really gorgeous and he, he walked in and he said what the hell is that and I, I went through the history of the Orville Gibson bit and all that and he was fascinated by it so um, I think it's going to be a great little talking piece I just hope it sounds passable you know and that will be really good 
But anyway, I'm going to get on with more sanding, but at least I've, after seeing it now with the colour, I feel in a better frame of mind to sand it. So we'll carry on with that. Thank you very much. Well, there's another couple of hours sanding under the belt now. Ugh. Um, it's a bit, uh, when, when you sand with, um, I mean, I, I think sanding sealer is just like pumice powder mixed with uh, shellac. Um, you know, and it, it, it raises the grain uh, of the wood and allows you to sand it and stay flat. Um, what you must do is get, it's not so important on the light wood, but on the dark wood, what you must do before you recoat is get the, um, get all this dust off. I mean, okay, you know, you think, oh, I can just wipe it over with a damp cloth. That makes it just like, um, disappear just 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 really camouflages it um, best thing to use is a, a purpose proprietary tack rag which is basically made for wiping over cars when you're spraying them sort of thing between coats and sanding and it's sticky and and gets gets off all this this stuff so it's something you must do um, the other thing you really have to decide is is how far are you gonna go with getting the finish you want, um, it, it's a it's a very very long process. Um, if you want it to be, um, and if you want a perfect glass finish with cellulose lacquer, you're looking at investing a lot of time um, in that. And something this shape as well is just going to be um, a nightmare. And um, so, you know, try and set your expectations a bit of what you want. I mean, to get this absolutely perfect, and the problem is the, the nearer you get to that perfect um, piano style gloss finish, um, the more the faults show up. Every little, you know, you get a perfectly, you know, mirrored surface and one little pit in it will stand out like it's all thumb. So you end up... Um, chasing your tail a little bit, um, you know, oh, we'll re-sand it back, lacquer it again. I mean, of course you can do it, it just takes a lot of time. Um, I don't want to invest that much time in this, plus the fact I want it to look old anyway. Um, I, I don't see the point of making a brand new shiny one, so I'm going to go for an okay finish on it with, with, with a bit of ageing. I mean, in addition, if you want a perfect finish, you have to have like a, you know, a proper proper spray shop really with extractor fans this that and the other to get rid of all the dust and stuff um, you know a lot of people will, will tip a load of lacquer on um, let it dry for a few months and then like sand it back to a finish sort of thing and then polish it and um, again another long process and I don't really like lacquer that thick um, so I'm I'm gonna set my sights with this to like a uh, you know an antique finish basically and I think that will suit the instrument quite well I mean it's important really when you you know I mean I do a lot of refinishing for guitars for people and I'm I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to give up doing as new finishes um, I'm just going to be doing like aged and cellulose finishes in the future and um, I've had a few disasters in the past believe me plenty of them but you you know you can't you, you can't do a you know a perfect cellulose finish for a couple of hundred quid it's just not possible and are people gonna gonna be willing to pay you commensurate amount you know oh you, I'm gonna respray your your 250 pound guitar but it's gonna cost you 800 pound it's, it's just not not feasible to do um, so yeah I mean that's what I'm gonna go for with this I mean it means I can get it finished quicker and it's going to look how I want it to look um, and get on with the next project the more you do the better you get kind of thing so um, I'm going to go over this with a with a tack rag now and whack another coat of um, light coat of sand in sealer on it and see and see what it looks like well hi there um, I've put a second coat of sand in sealer on now I mean I don't know if it looks much different in the in the um, video than the last time but 
it is looking quite a lot nicer. Um, I mean, basically, I just go through the same process again now. I can see it's quite a lot of scratches around here. The one thing the sand and sealer does do is it, you know, because it puts a little bit of a sheen on it, it does really highlight places that you need to do work and you, you, you may have to go back to, um, to bare wood as well, you know, if you notice that there's a bit lumpy somewhere or whatever, but that's the whole idea of it sort of thing. I mean, I can see round here it looks a little bit, um, I don't know if I can get light on it, it lo looks a little bit lumpy, so I've got a lot of sanding to do round there, a lot of scratches to get off around here and actually on the top here and and just here there's quite a few scratches that I've got to sand out. Um, I had a little play with some wood stain um, on these things here um, and I'm not sure which way to go. I, I, I quite actually like the whiter feet, or beaks, whatever they blooming well are, but I quite like, quite like that so I, I, I still haven't decided where to go with those yet. I mean that is just stain that I've brushed on over the top. Um, you know it's going to be a bit of a mystery of how to uh, get rid of this filler here sort of thing. Um, it's going to be some sort of airbrush work or something. Um, I was saying we'll just have, I have no idea myself so I'll just have to no use waffling about it. Um, but I think it is looking uh, looking really good now. Um, so we'll just it's just keeping going but at least we're getting some encouragement so there we go and uh, catch up with you guys uh, when we're on to the next bit which uh, won't be long now before we might be uh, might be getting some strings on it and stuff yep good good out well welcome again to 3R guitars and wherever we are in this build um, you remember yesterday I sprayed uh, couple of coats of um, sanding sealer on, on, on the instrument um, and overnight uh, you know the, the, the stuff gets absorbed into the wood and although it looks you know it's beginning to look really nice now um, after a, a night's rest I don't know if you'll be able to see it on there but there's lots of scratches in the wood I mean the, the disappointing and great thing about sanding sealer is it you know it puts a bit of a shine on on it and it's much easier to see every little defect and uh, although it means you've got a lot more work to do at least you know you won't be disappointed in the final finish if you get these marks out now um, I'm finding by far the most difficult bit to do is as I sort of thought at the beginning is these little steps in here um, you know because you're sanding across the grain and along the grain and everything and just getting this really nice edge in there so I think I'll be working on sanding these nicely today getting the scratches out and maybe getting another another coat on today um, so yeah it's getting a bit encouraging now at least though so um, and I keep on going on about it but um, I've really got to find a way of getting these these uh, these parts blended in and I think once I get a few more coats of sanding sealer on then I can start experimenting with um, you know various dyes sprayed in the uh, you know with the spray gun to bring this colour closer to the top. Um, I had my wife look at it yesterday and asked her oh do you like the 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 different coloured feet on it kind of thing not feet or whatever they are on it she she emphatically said no they just look as though they've been added on there so um, she's got a pretty good eye for these things and it's funny I, I took some pictures of it and put it on my Facebook page and although when I'm looking at the thing physically, you know, in the flesh, so to speak, I, I don't mind the, the lighter things. But when I looked at it in the photograph, no, I didn't like them. I quite like, you know, quite like this one up here that's been very roughly blotched in the same colour. 
and I also tried to get it um, nice round there. So I think what needs to happen is this maple sides need to be sprayed to match the top and then um, all this can be sprayed in with the same colour as that. I mean I don't know how well it will go but um, yeah well that's what we've got to do so it's back to the sanding and uh, thank you very much. Well good morning and welcome back to 3R Guitars. Bit of a windy day today we've got uh, Storm Eunice outside which is a bit worrying because the shed is the shed is wobbling but sanding must go on. Um, like I say I've got about the second coat of um, sanding sealer on now and um, I'm just basically going over you know once you get the sanding sealer on and you leave it set overnight you notice loads of scratches and stuff like that and this actual liar arm is very very nice um, I'm happy with that um, this one here I can just see loads of scratches so I've got to sand all them out um, one thing that's worth noting okay you can stand sit there with sandpaper but you won't get the scratches out until you basically get back down to wood um, and obviously you can't use you know a coarse sandpaper otherwise you're just going to make more scratches but one very good thing I find is just a Stanley knife blade and um, you know you can you can shave off um, very nicely and it, it, it gives quite a you know quite a polished finish sort of thing um, I mean you can of course use proprietary uh, cabinet scrapers but a I'm useless at sharpening them and they might be a little bit big for this because you can you know you can pick up areas like here I've got a, a patch that's not level kind of thing you know it's still it's got a few little divots in it and you know, you can just go over it with a standing knife blade and you can see the little pile of light shaving. So you can get things very flat and just a light rub over with sandpaper after that and um, you know, you're ready. The back, I actually um, rushed it a bit too much um, in the sense that on a you know on a dark wood like this you don't see the scratches so much but I don't know how I forgot but what I normally do with mahogany before I do it is um, I use a grain filler which is like a like a coloured paste um, and that is so good for doing doing darker woods like mahogany um, I mean if you're doing something like ash that has a lot of uh, pores in it and stuff you can um, you know you can use a clear a clear grain filler but this is um, yeah this is going to take a while a lot of sanding because you can I don't know if you can see but you can see all the pips which is just a feature of mahogany kind of thing so it's too late to put grain filler on now it won't stick but um, so I'll have to basically sand it or keep sanding it and, and, and spraying it um, I'm not one for sticking uh, tons of finish on and then just flattening it back I don't like doing that um, it ends up too thick uh, so yeah I'm just going to carry on doing this and then uh, we'll go from there well um, I've been at this about another good hour or so sanding and sanding and sanding and um, yeah, it's about ready for another coat now. Um, I've spent a lot of time on the back. Like I say, I'd forgotten the grain filler on it kind of thing. So um, basically been sanding this back, um, sanding and scraping. I mean, it's not perfect. Um, there are dents in it in places and uh, you know, where, where I've been a bit uh, enthusiastic with the carving. And you know, unless you take the whole you know that the whole area down kind of thing I mean there's a there's quite a, a, a divot there sort of thing going with the grain but you know what choice have I got I, I either fill it or sand it right down and if I sand it right down I'm gonna lose the shape so 
I'm just putting that down to uh, um, bodgy building kind of thing. But you know, uh, you've just got to you know go with 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 a level that you you're you're, you're happy with. Um, you know, you could go on and on and on and get it absolutely perfect. I'm not going to do that. I I haven't got the time and B. You know, um, I prefer to work on other projects, kind of thing. Um, but I don't really want to see any scratches on it and stuff under the finish. So that's what I'm going to concentrate on getting out. Um, unfortunately, I don't know if today is going to be kind enough for me to do any spray in my spraying gears in um, in another small garden shed, kind of thing. Um, when it comes to spraying. Uh, I guess you know if you want to if you want to start doing it yourself, you can you can you know buy a setup for probably three hundred pounds something like that. I mean I've got quite a good compressor because I work on cars as well occasionally. Um, spray guns, any any cheap gun off eBay for about twenty quid will get paint on for you. Um, like I say, in most musical instruments. You don't actually spray to a finish. You, you polish to a finish. You know. So even when I do this with clear, clear shiny lacquer, I'll get the lacquer on as good as I can. But the problem you've got is that you know, in order to get a, a really beautiful finish out of the gun, you need to thin it down quite a lot. And then with a shape like this, with all these curves and and and, 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 and things on it, you've got a risk of runs and stuff and things like that. So. I'll, just, I'll, I'll be getting the lacquer on it and then um, polishing it back kind of thing sanding and polishing it back and then polishing it up but I don't I don't want a you know a sparkling uh, Werther's original finish kind of thing I, I just want something with a nice patina to it so um, that will suit me fine but um, yeah hopefully the weather will calm down later they said it will calm down from about three o'clock and I can get another coat on it so there we go well, good morning again. Back to 3R Guitars. Um, yeah, uh, we put a, you know, after Storm Eunice went past, I, I managed to get another coat of uh, lacquer on this yesterday afternoon after another good few hours sanding. And to be honest, I can still see the scratches in it, you know, in some lights and it, it, it's, it's beginning to wear me down now a little bit. Um, I suppose one good thing is we are getting the the pits filled in from the uh, from the mahogany here, sort of thing. But so I can still see a lot of scratches around here and stuff. But I think, to be honest, I'm going to have to draw a line under it. I'll have one more go at getting them out. Um, I mean, they are. They are disappearing slowly, and you know if you look at it like that, you you can't see see any. It's just if you catch it right in the light. I mean, I was showing my wife, like she said, well, it looks perfect, and then she said, wobbling it around, but she said, oh, oh yeah, you can see like faint scratches on it. But I'm going to have to say enough is enough at some point. Um, I don't want this thing to take over my life. I want to I want to get playing it and. I could say at the end of the day, I'm going for a, um, you know, an antique sort of finish on it anyway. The other thing I was looking at, um, I was actually looking at some photos of the thing and wondering how I'm going to stain this. Um, I mean, I had a go there, you can see, just with my airbrush at uh, staining the sides of it um, with a coloured lacquer to match the top, which kind of did it quite well um, but when I actually looked at closer at some photos of this that the the photos do actually um, vary quite a bit as you know by the time they've been taken with a camera and then put on the internet and whatever computer you're looking at them from but it seems to me as though the the sides are the same color as the back which kind of makes sense because every instrument you make, you know, any acoustic instrument you make, generally the backs match the sides. So I think what I'm going to do is actually spray a dark, a dark stain around this to match the mahogany on the back, and then it will just have the the light top, which will be much more traditional looking, and that will also make it much easier to get 
to get these areas of filler that I've put that I've put in. I mean, all this, you know, up, up, up to that line there. All, all this section will then be the dark mahogany colour, which I think will look a lot nicer and make it a lot easier for me to to shade these in. Then it's just the tops that I've got to worry about. Um, so for now, I'll get on with a bit more sanding, and um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see how we go. But I promise this will be the last the last bit of sanding I'm going to do with the uh, with sanding sealer. I'm going to be moving on to the lacquer, um, pretty pretty sharpish because uh, yeah, I want to see some want to see the uh, the finishing line. So, so let's get on with it. Uh, hi there and welcome back to 3R Guitars, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, the last last few like snippets of video have been pretty boring really, just covering sanding and, and uh, putting um, uh, sanding sealer on and stuff, I mean, I've got it to, I guess, where I'm happy with it, I mean, I'm not in, entirely, like, um, delighted with it, uh, um, there's still a few scratches left in it, but to be honest, I, I've, I've been over it so many times now that uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I have to confess, like uh, yeah, I want to move on to the next step. Um, so what I've done in part now is I, I've masked this line um, when I want to try and spray the sides with the tinted lacquer to match the back. Um, I spent uh, about an hour and a half trying to do the masking. Um, yeah, it's it, it, some things on this instrument with all these tight curves and whatnot. I mean, I'm not going to be able to spray in these areas anyway. Um, I'll have to do that by brush or some other method. Um, so I've just masked more or less the you know just the line where I want to spray up to I'll be spraying this like very very like dry you, you, you don't want to tip loads of lacquer on it with the spray gun when you're going up to masking tape otherwise you leave like quite an edge um, plus you'll get the, the lacquer bleeding underneath the, the masking tape um, the thing with with shading, I mean, I'm quite lucky. I've got quite a good uh, eye for um, eye for colour when I mix up, and had quite a lot of experience matching um, uh, dyes and wood and things like that. I mean, I've done it for years, and I used to spray cars, sort of thing, and matching colours. Don't know, that was always the one they used to come to for like, well, what could I shade this with or whatever? So I'm a bit lucky like that. Um, so hopefully I can get a good match on here. You know, it's just a case of mixing it up. Don't don't go too dark straight away, obviously, because you can't do anything about it being too dark. It's more or less the like the the, the shade of the colour. If, if if the colour is the right shade, you can always add further coats to make it darker. But if you start off too dark, um, then you're a bit stuffed. I mean, I'm looking at this here. And I'm thinking, and what we've got with this is, is obviously there's a bit of br there's a bit of brown stain in there. Um, there's a bit of red, and I'd say some yellow as well because it's quite a warm it's quite a warm colour that, and you can definitely see yellows in it. Um, so I'm going to go with bit, uh, clear lacquer, a bit of brown, um, bit of bit of uh, a yellow and uh, a touch of red. Red is very very strong when you mix it up so just start off with a bit of that and we'll we'll test a spray we'll test a section on a bit of um, maple I've got and see what that looks like and then if it's about right can give it a go. I've got um, several spray guns I've obviously got like a massive one where you can tip on loads of stuff and I've got a few detailed ones and I've got the airbrush um, I won't be using the airbrush on this you'll be here for a month of Sunday so I'll get one of my smaller spray guns in we'll mix up some lacquer and um, see where we get to well here we go I've got my alchemy set out um, I've got some cellulose, clear cellulose lacquer um, and I've got red stain 
yellow stain and brown stain. Uh, there must be spirit bait stains. Um, you won't mix a water-based stain with with um, with cellulose lacquer, so there's got to be a spirit-based stain. Um, on the other side, I, I don't really get on very well with water-based stains. Um, anyway, uh, I've tried them in the past. Not you know, the staining wood straight away. Just don't get on with them. They don't, uh, with my view, they don't soak into the wood so well. So I started off with this on the on the um, well, whatever side of that is. You can see the yellow one. Um, yeah, I had some a little bit of brown, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red in there. Um, I didn't. Obviously, that's too yellow kind of thing. You can see on the back of this. And we're trying to match this sort of thing. Um, that's far too yellow, but in my eye, it's kind of the right. It's the right colour to start with. Um, then I added a bit of brown to it, and we're getting damn close there. Um, I thought it was a bit too light, and then um, went with a slight bit more brown. Um, and I think that's quite a nice. That's quite a nice looking match there on the end. Um, there's a little bit of red in it, but only a fraction. Um, what I tend to do when I mix up these lacquers for spray for shading, I always end up with too much because you know you put a bit in, you think, oh that will be enough to do that, and um, then by the time you've added the stain in and you've added, and if you've gone a bit too dark, you can add a bit more lacquer in to dilute it a bit more. And I always end up with too much, so I've got three bottles on the back shelf, one of a yellowish. Color, one of a brown colour and one of a red colour and I do dip into those occasionally instead of using up all my stains and don't throw away the lacquer sort of thing. So we've got the basic pot of shite here um, and you know when you spray the, the, I always find with cellulose is that I, I, I tend to mix it by eye because you know you buy a you buy a tin of cellulose paint or lacquer and they never are a consistent viscosity so um, this will probably spray okay um, it drips off the the mixing stick kind of thing um, I don't actually think that needs thinning too much um, I like to see it form into drips rather than run off and that's probably probably just needs a touch of cellulose thinners in there so. Like I say, um, I don't mix it by just happy with a few drops in there. Um, yeah, now that's quite runny. I wouldn't like to spray. Um, a whole guitar body with that. Yeah, I think you'd end up with a few runs on it, but I'm happy with that for what I'm doing here because I want to start off light. I don't want big chunks of big chunks of paint flying on, sort of thing. Um, like I say, I've not done a great job of of masking it. It just was taking ages. The secret with masking: buy a decent tape. Don't buy a cheap cheap brand of tape because you put it on and it will fall off. Don't mask it up days before you're going to spray because it will it will fall off or it will stick really hard. I hate masking; um, it's always a disaster. But I'm not going to get this like masked up particularly well unless I took a month Sundays doing it. So when I spray here, I might get some on the top, but I'll be sanding down the top anyway. Um, but I just want to spray these sides and just see where we are. So. Um, and this is the results I got, um, you know, and you can see that, you know, where I sat, you know, where the where it came off more, you've got kind of, you know, more of a kind of see-through look in those parts. And um, there's just a bit of dust on it, but I really like it now. I mean, I was really more, more concerned with being pleased with the colour. And what I decided to do as well is, I did a kind of sunburst spray around the edge and um, it looks a bit odd at the moment because obviously 
went with the, the colour I sprayed on is a, is, is a lacquer, which is naturally much more shiny than the, the sanding sealer. But I really like, you know, this kind of look where you've got like the sort of faded, faded kind of look where the colours bleed, bled out a little bit. So um, I really like it. I also like the sort of the bit of red around here. So I'm, I'm actually like really pleased with it. Um, you can see inside here as well, you know, where it's faded, looks really nice. What I will be doing is um, I'm going to roughly mask off these areas and I want to spray this so it comes out a little bit more red, so it's a bit more in keeping with this kind of colour here. Um, the next thing, and, and what you can see here as well, is the filler that I put in around these now is nicely, is nicely covered sort of thing and looks really you know you can't see see any of it now so I've just I had a go at kind of doing doing these bits I mean even the and, and stain in this and even the fill around there and stuff that was on there doesn't really look bad um, looks a bit bad round here and what I'm gonna um, looks a bit bad round here sorry and what I'm gonna do now is get my airbrush out and do a bit of jiggery pokery with some different um, techniques and try and maybe disguise the, the filler a bit more there. Um, we'll see how that goes, I'm not 100% sure but um, we can never mess about with it, you've always got sandpaper to take it off anyway but overall I'm really pleased with the, with the look of it now. There's odd bits I've got to tidy up where the masking wasn't particularly great but I want it to look old, I don't want it to look bad, brand spanking new, so um, I'm not worried about the odd chip and stuff and thing as long as the overall look of it is really nice. So um, I'll get my airbrush out and have a bit of a play and call, get you back then. Cheers.